try this one tip to help you with painting washes in watercolour, especially if you're a beginner. Let's get started. So I'm mixing up a puddle of the Shadow Violet, a very, very thin puddle. So what's going to really help your washes is if you put your painting at an angle, as what I've done here with the framing tape, your washes will flow down nicely, creating a watercolour bead, which really does help you control washes, enabling you to create flawless washes, atmospheric sort of effects, etc. So I'm going to demonstrate this now. So I'm getting my size 14 brush and really loading it. Make sure you've got plenty of paint. But I'm just loading it all the time. Just um, this is wet on dry. And with that little tilt, you can see a little bead forming. Not so much on the right hand side, but definitely on the left. You kind of want a lot of bead, really. But this paper is so rough. It seems and, and sort of absorbent. It's really soaking up the paint. So that's why I've had to kind of keep loading my brush. But just take Take your time doing this as long as there's a bead you can sort of go halfway through that bead so you can it can you continue down but as long as you load that brush that's the important thing and work your way down make sure you have plenty of paint when you're doing a flat wash like this wet on dry this is for the background and what I'm doing now is I've just diluted that wash and I'm paling it towards the horizon. I'm working my way down now towards the bottom of the painting where it's quite sort of misty. And what I'm doing now is I'm adding plenty more water here to make sure I don't run out of paint. If you're worried about doing this, make sure you make a big puddle in the first place so you don't have to panic. And the other thing you can do is work on a smaller scale, especially if you're starting out in watercolour painting. What I'm doing now is I'm using the size 14 brush and mixing up a little bit more paint to make it a bit darker as you come into the foreground. So as you can see, tilting your painting really does give you these beautiful uninterrupted flat washes. So there's a slight angle so it helps the paint move down and flow better and I've mixed up a little bit of slightly darker colour now so the paint's a little bit damper, a bit creamier to make that darker area right in the foreground painting wet on dry. I'm using my size 6 brush now and I'm painting damp into wet so the paper is wet but my brush is damp so the paint is slightly thicker and I've taken the excess off on a paper towel. So I'm just working away here on these sort of distant trees where it's quite misty in the background and this is a nice way of creating mist. What you don't want to do is make your brush wetter than the surface of the paper so make sure your paint's slightly creamier and I'm painting some grasses in damp into damp in the foreground with my size 14 brush. If you find that your foreground has dried too quickly you can paint this wet on dry in the next stage. Remember to take the excess paint off on a paper towel to ensure that your brush is damp and not too wet. And I'm going to let my painting dry. I'm using the size 6 brush and I'm working wet on dry and I'm painting these wildflowers. I believe it's hogweed but I could be wrong here and I'm just diluting here here, making some lighter areas so dropping sort of a watery paint into a damp paint you may get backgrounds but it's all part of the lovely textures that you can get with watercolor and I'm painting with the tip of my size 6 brush wet on dry with this shadow violet color and painting all this detail it's quite nice using this size 6 brush because it's got quite a nice point but you can actually get the detail as well. So I'm varying the sort of consistency of my paint. Some of it's a little bit more watery and some of it's a bit creamier. But when I let this dry I'm going to do another layer of the top to build up more darks and details. Now I would say this is the trickiest bit of the painting, painting this stem. The hardest thing is to paint it all in one go. So what I'm doing here is I'm sort of, sort of shuffling along almost with my brush sort of loading the brush each time. I'm just missing that little hogweed there, Queen Anne's lace um, there, just in the uh, just at the bottom there. And I'm just sort of, can you see that? I'm just sort of pulling my brush along, taking my time, so you don't sort of flick the brush somewhere. I think that's the sort of scariest bit. But if that does happen, remember, don't panic, rinse your brush, put a blob of water on it, and then lift off with some kitchen towel. Don't blob off first with a kitchen towel because you press the paint into the paper. 
As you saw it there, I left a little gap in the stem just to put this smaller flower there, just using the tip of the brush and just working that paint on there, wet on dry, and then just painting that stem in. Just take your time with this. It's actually so effective. I was actually really surprised how this turned out, much better than I thought it would. It was. It almost looks photographic, and you can create this lovely misty a background and then these lovely sort of foreground flowers it's so effective so as I there I put a lighter tone on and I'm putting darker tones around it so you can really sort of build up your lights and darks together here so I'm using the tip of the brush to create the texture I was originally going to use the sponge for this and you can certainly do that still but I thought I just fancy just using just brushes and not any extras sort of things today so um just enjoying that so I'm you know as you look at my palette there I've got thinner washes I've got slightly creamier washes there a real mixture and it gives me that ability to kind of work as I am doing there now putting those dark washes on next to those lighter ones and there's, a, there's something very freeing and something very relaxing about this and uh, I really hope that you get that same feeling that I'm getting there that control as it were um, and I'm just using the again the tip of my brush what's lovely about these brushes is that it holds lots of paint so uh, but you you can still use the tip and it just flows out again I'm painting this stem now it's kind of a mid-tone and I'm just shuffling along again just brushing it along taking my time rather than painting it all down I find sometimes if I paint the whole thing at once my kind of hand goes a bit sort of skew with and then suddenly I've got this line where I don't want it so I'm just now putting a little bit more creamier paint just to create the sort of darker prongs here and painting this stem through as well. So I'm just painting this smaller one here again using that lighter tone to begin with and then I'll get, look there, I've just added a little pinch of the neat colour into that damp paint and just putting that in damp into wet or even damp into damp it would be fine it's just to create that soft sort of you know fused sort of tonal values you've got the light and the darker tones so I'm painting this little one on the right hand side it's quite silhouetted but I want to put those sort of light mid-tones on first so then I can drop in the damp paint the damp slightly darker painting afterwards as well as I'm doing there right at the bottom and then painting the stem and I'm doing a little bit of brushwork so of flicking with the tip of the brush as well to get some nice expressive little marks to show these very small leaves and I think I'll allow my painting to dry. I'll be working wet on dry just to paint some darks now in this wildflower and just to kind of give it a little bit more depth and bring this flower forward from the background as well. I'm using the size six brush. It is wet on dry. I'm still using that shadow violet and I'm just creating textures on the edges here. Have fun with it. Just look at those darks in the picture. Remember with watercolor, keep it simple. You know, just don't overdo things. Paint what you see and move on. Don't doubt yourself. As you can see here, I'm actually putting just that next layer of dark tone and look how that pops forward. It brings it to life, doesn't it? When you let a painting dry properly and then put another tonal value over the top, make sure you leave the light areas. I think one of the mistakes I find a lot of beginners make is when they put the next layer on, they cover up all their light as well. So really look at where those dark tones are. Start training your eye. The more you look for the darks, the better you'll get. Especially doing a tonal painting like this, you become more aware of dark colors. It's harder sometimes when you use color and tone because you forget about the dark and then you end up with a colorful painting that lacks depth. So I have actually swapped to the size two brush. So always use the brush that you feel comfortable with. This little brush, even though it's got a lovely little point, it still carries plenty of paint. So it's doing what I need it to do. Get that details and darks. Decided to use end of my paintbrush and I've sharpened it believe it or not with a pencil sharpener so it creates a lovely point now this is not a sable brush it's nothing special this brush is an old brush that I've used to put masking fluid on and I'm just creating some real spiky little textures just to finish off with those final little bits of details wet on dry with that shadow violet 
So here is the finished painting. I've removed the framing tape. I really hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches, and you can cancel any time. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy wildflowers painting. Bye for now.